Here we go. Ready? Okay. Oh, I just, I write in my spare time, but I don't, I'm not really a writer writer. I just write a little here and there. I, I wrote like three chapters the other day, but it was just awful. So I just, I just deleted it. It was, it was terrible. It's just gone now. No, 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 no. Stop, stop that all. Stop it all right now. Hi, I'm Allison Spooner, author, yoga instructor, and creative warrior, and today we're going to be talking about some bad writing habits that you should break today, now, right this second. Writers have a lot of habits. If you've been writing for a long time, you've developed probably some good habits and probably some not so good habits. If you have some ideas for bad writing habits that you need to break or that you think could be holding other writers back, please share them in the comments and maybe we'll get enough to do a part two. So the first bad writing habit that you should stop right now, right now because it's terrible, you're not terrible, but doing this is generally not a good idea. Deleting work you don't like. I'm in a lot of writing groups and I've seen a lot of writing threads in my day and I cringe when I hear writers say, I didn't like it, so I deleted it. <laughs> Oof, once you delete it, it is gone forever. And I know you probably think it's so terrible that it deserves to be gone forever, but listen, don't do it. Don't delete. You never know what little tidbits from one sentence or little remnants from that idea might come in handy later on down the road. If you don't ever wanna look at these things again, fine. Put them in a trash pile, a slush pile, a sludge pile. Writers have lots of different names for them, a trash file. Have a whole document on your computer wherever you write that's just trash but don't delete it. And then if you're ever stuck for ideas or you're ever in the middle of a slump and you just don't know how to move forward, go back to your trash pile, look through it. One, it might remind you how good you are now. If you look at some of the stuff you wrote a while ago and hated, you might start feeling a little bit better about yourself. But two, these ideas that you thought were terrible at the time, might just give you a little idea that will help you move forward now. It's a really roundabout way of saying, and I don't even know if I know how to explain it. Don't delete, just don't. Put it somewhere where you don't have to see it anymore if you really don't wanna look at it. You don't have to let anyone else read it. You can lock the trash file, put a password on it, whatever you gotta do to make yourself feel better, but don't delete. So another bad writing habit that you need to break right now, Refusing to call yourself a writer. If you write, you're a writer. If you're passionate about writing, you're a writer. It doesn't matter if you've never been published or if you've never completed anything. If you devote time to writing because you're passionate about it and you love it, you're a writer. And the more you hem and haw whenever someone asks you about it, the more it's going to mess with your self-esteem and the more you're going to feel like an imposter. And if you tend to suffer from imposter syndrome or what I like to call imposter tendencies, check out my video, How to Fight Imposter Syndrome. And we changed the name to imposter tendencies. But when you say, I'm a writer, something in your brain clicks your mouth tells your brain that you're a writer and your brain will start to believe it. The more you say it, the more you will believe it. The more you say, oh, I'm not really a writer. I just dabble here and there. I just write on weekends. If you write on weekends, you're a writer. Or I don't know, I've never really published anything, so I'm not really a writer the more you're gonna to start to believe it. You're going to have a harder time believing in yourself and feeling confident in your abilities as a writer. 
So if you refuse to call yourself a writer, that is a bad writing habit that you need to break. Our next bad writing habit that you need to break is really going to slow you down if you're on a tight deadline or if you're shooting for a goal of getting a novel done or a story done in a certain amount of time. Editing as you go. You get caught up on editing as you go along, it's going to really, really slow your progress and you're going to focus less on the story and where it needs to go and more on the minute details that are going to be easier to edit when it's all said and done anyway. If you're moving along, you know exactly where you need to go next, you know how you want this chapter to end, and you know how this chapter is going to lead into the next chapter, and all of a sudden you come across a word, and you're like, oh, that's not the right word. I don't think that's the word I want. But what is the word I want? Should I look it up? Should I source? Should I Google? Maybe Google different words for this word? You're gonna get stuck. All that momentum you've been building, you're gonna lose it. And that is not good. If you have momentum, keep going. If that word is not the word you wanna use, underline it, highlight it, write yourself a little note, think of a new word later, and move on. Which also leads into our next tip, getting stuck on a word or a description. So these two bad habits go together. Editing as you go and getting stuck on a word or a description or a name. Looking at you, we have all been stuck on a name and we have been convinced we can't move on until we have the perfect name for this character or this city. Where did that get you? Probably not very far along in your story. So please, please, if you have the habit of editing as you go, put it on pause for a little while. There are times when it can be useful, yes, but try to give it up for a little bit. Try to break that writing habit. Get a whole chapter done. Get a whole novel done. <laughs> but if you need to start small, start with a chapter. Get a whole chapter done without editing. I know, maybe that means you have to turn off the automatic spell check because you're gonna see all those red squiggly lines and wanna go back and change them. Turn it off for a little while. Get to the end of the chapter and then go back and say, okay, maybe I need to change this word, maybe I need to change this word. This word. But honestly, try to go as long as possible without going back and editing. Sometimes it's gonna be necessary for the story. If that scene is no longer gonna work where it is, maybe you pull it out, stick it in your to use later pile or whatever you have, and then keep moving. Don't get stuck on a name or a description. I'm gonna tell you one thing I did the other day. <laughs> I was writing along and I was moving along and I have a hard time with descriptions. I really do. And I just wrote, describe this place, all in caps. Highlighted it, made sure it was visible, and I kept going. Later on, I would need to go back and put a description in there, but I didn't want to lose my momentum, so I made a note to do it later and I kept going. So, no editing as you go and no getting stuck on words, descriptions, or names. And this next bad habit is going to be hard to hear, so brace yourselves, but stay with me. Writing only when you feel like it. I know, we want to write when the muse is with us, when that urge is just so overpowering, we have to drop everything and head to our computers, and that's great, write when that happens, but you can't write only when that happens, because life gets in the way. It finds a way, but it also gets in the way. If you only write when you feel like it, as much as you love writing, it's probably not going to happen as often as it should to help you achieve your goals. It's hard to hear, it's painful to hear, but if we let ourselves get distracted by the rest of the world and only write when we feel like it, not a lot of writing is going to get done. So you have to be disciplined about your writing habit. So writing only when you feel like it, unfortunately, is a bad writing habit that you should try to break. Because the good news is, the hardest part of writing is just getting your butt in the chair. 
once you're there, once your hands are on that keyboard or that pen is in hand, it gets easier. Once you write that first word or that first sentence, the next one's gonna come a little easier. It gets easier. The hardest part is getting the butt in the chair. But it's possible. There I am, cracking myself up. And another bad writing habit that you need to just get out of your head right now is thinking that writing has to be solitary and lonely. It can be, and there are times when writing in isolation without distractions is important. But writing in general does not have to be lonely. If you're struggling with writer's block or other writing challenges, you don't have to struggle alone. Having a writing community around you can help you move forward in your writing journey. Your writing community can help you push past challenges, get new ideas, get new perspectives, and just be there for support when you need it. Writing does not have to be lonely and humans are wired to work in a community. As much as we like to say we don't like people or we don't like other people or writers are very introverted, it's probably all true. People, you know, eh, not so great all the time. But if you get with the right people, if you find your tribe, it can be a very rewarding and inspirational experience. So if you need a writing community that can support you in your writing journey, just join the Creative Warriors Facebook group over on Facebook and I will put the link in the description below. We can't wait to meet you. Now, bust those bad writing habits and go fight for your creativity.